On today's episode, a lot of news and notes. we got to break down this Cleveland Browns situation. Who's actually going to be healthy, available for Cleveland? You'll find out. And then we jump into the mailbag. Subscribe to this channel. Like this episode. Enjoy. Hey, Foot Clan want to thank Coinbase for supporting today's show. Well, that's that's pretty well timed here. <laughs> yeah, uh, it is. Cryptocurrency might feel like a secret or exclusive club, but Coinbase believes that everyone everywhere should be able to get in the door. Whether you've been trading for years or just getting started, Coinbase can help. If you've been looking to level up that financial portfolio, who doesn't want to level up their financial portfolio? Look, you can diversify and you can think about crypto. And you can uh, jump on, jump in on Coinbase. They're backed by the world's leading investors. So then you're safe, you're secure, you can add crypto to the mix without any of that kind of wishy-washy, scary stuff out there in the world. And for a limited time, new users can get $10 in free Bitcoin. So maybe by the end of this read, it'll be worth $20. <laughs> that um, is true. $10 in free Bitcoin when you sign up today at coinbase.com slash footballers. Sign up at coinbase.com slash footballers for $10 in free Bitcoin. This offer is for a limited time only, so be sure to sign up today. That's coinbase.com slash footballers. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. <laughs> <laughs> that was just, right there with you, Mike. It just came out? <laughs> yeah. That I, was from me? I, yeah, you just... you. I you, inspired that? Yeah, you drew it out. I, I imagine... <laughs> I imagine that in sync with Mike, millions of people were also not. being drawn to... <laughs> that can't be... Associated with the intro. Mm, yeah, too late. What is that sound? That's right. Is that Ricky Rick, Seals Jones? No, that's Richard Nixon. Oh. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was one of those World of Warcraft. Oh, the uh, Murloc? The Murloc. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you're still with us, welcome in the Fantasy Footballers, Andy, Mike, and Jason. Wednesday, October 20th. So glad to have you with us. Bipocalypse begins. Waiver wires going through. Oh, man. Uh, man, I, I'm some of the people I have at the bottom of my waiver list today. You're embarrassed. Oh, I'm embarrassed. <laughs> I'm embarrassed. David Johnson on there. I mean, some of these players don't belong on your team. I'm sitting here with dilemmas like Amon Ross St. Brown versus Donovan Peoples Jones. Oh, I'm oh. cool with those, both those guys. Yeah, I know. Those are like the top those of the, are the mountain. Oh, okay. <laughs> We are on Spotify Green Room this afternoon. Speaking of the top of the mountain on waivers, and I know that this show's a little too <laughs> I late. Was, I thought you were going to Green Room. But yeah, I mean, okay, is. what? I'm speaking about what you uh, used about. to be talking about. Um, anybody else worried about the Ernest Johnson? Like oh, I have I, continually lowered my bid on him mm, because one week, well, it, one, for sure. Yeah, well, it seems like one week, and while he has his opportunity, he does not have his starting quarterback. He does not have his Probably his left tackle, his right tackle, uh, the the wide receivers could be missing. Like this could just be a real, real bad game. This is like Kareem Hunt wasn't good last week before the injury, are and you, now Dearness Johnson is. Are you trying to preview the Thursday night preview? It's uh, it's a teaser. Yeah, I this, mean, you know exactly what he's doing, Andy. He's trying to convince us to lower drive our drive down that price. I don't have much. Fun. Oh, <laughs> by the time we get to Thursday night preview, waivers will have already run. Yes. Yeah, and you're yeah. not tricking me. Oh my gosh! If you, if that was true, <laughs> if you're really trying to there's, use this show to okay. drive down the bids, there's, for you no on this show. There is no there is no more than five percent of what I said <laughs> that was targeted there. But there was, there was at least five, there, was, there gotta, was exactly five percent. I gotta tell you guys, this dude's a bust this week. <laughs> you should lower your. Bid. Anybody else thinking about bidding nothing on him? <laughs> and then twenty minutes later, I've really changed my opinion on <laughs> Ernest Johnson. 
very excited. Smash start. <laughs> well, I now think, that I got him. I think saboteur, Jason saboteur. <laughs> I think halfway through your preview of the preview, oh. you did break news to a lot of people, which is Baker Mayfield's not going to play this week. Mm-hmm. It's going to be Case Keenum extraordinaire on Thursday night against Teddy Bridgewater in a battle for the ages. Look, for a backup quarterback, could be way worse than Case Keenum. 100%. Way I mean, worse. He, he is a he is a former starting quarterback that was <laughs> That's true. That's uh, true. Well, I mean a he lot of a, a lot of the backups, you know, you look at most teams and their backups have only accidentally started. They've never been signed to be a starter of a team and and Case Keenum has done that, had success, made the playoffs. Is a I I I don't view this like ironically, I'm, I'm talking about oh, there's not going to have a starting quarterback, but the the injured version of Baker we've been seeing could be worse than the current version of Case Keenum healthy. There are two categories of backup quarterbacks, ones that throw downfield and ones that don't. Case Keenum's in the category that is willing to throw downfield, which is great. And he doesn't have Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt to where the entire offense can run through one player. So he may get a chance to air it out a little bit, and the Broncos might put him in that position tonight. We'll see. I was mentioning we're on Spotify Green Room, 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern, Green Room is a live audio app from Spotify. It's free. You can download it. Follow the uh, fantasy footballers. It's super fun. Yeah, it's a good time. Mm-hmm. It's a good time. By then, we'll know all the waiver fallout, and Jason can give you just unadulterated, true advice. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, buy sell time. <laughs> buy or sell, presented by Pristine Auction. Look, if I'm being honest, <laughs> if I'm being honest, there have been, I can count them on one hand, but there have been a handful of times when we're flipping on this recording light and I'm trying to figure out how much to say about a situation because mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I don't want to tip my hand to you two. And I think that that, I want to translate that into why this show is magical because we're in it with you, mm-hmm. but we may just totally ruin you <laughs> because of our biases. <laughs> Uh, buy or sell AJ Brown a top twenty four wide out. Uh, we did that one last week. Jason and Mike bought it. Ooh, Where he, did he finish? He made 22. it twenty two. Yeah, oh. that's called a cover. Oh man, yeah. I mean, you win. Uh, Chase Edmonds. We all sold him as a top twenty four against Cleveland. Adam Thielen top twenty four. We oh. all sold that, and he. <laughs> uh, whoops, was the yeah. wide receiver three. Buy or sell by Apocalypse Edition for Week 7. Josh Jacobs against Philadelphia. Is he a top 10 running back? He's not been one thus far this year. And um, faces the Eagles. Top 10 this week. We know there are a lot of players out. He won't have to compete with Najee Harris for the top 10. Man, that is really, really tough. I, I, almost, I, I almost made him my start of the week this week. So I am pro Josh Jacobs. I think the line. Prove is- it is difficult but i am gonna i am gonna buy this i i think the matchup against philly is good um and he he's he's healthy right now i mean 16 carries last week there's not a lot of fears that i have about uh you know over the over the previous several weeks it always seemed like he was struggling with something um i i think he's a great play this week and i would assume that the raiders come in and win this game and if that's the case the history says josh jacobs when they win has a good game yeah, in 17 Raider wins, he has 20 touchdowns. In 17 Raider losses, he has three. I will sell it. I'm kind of feeling out this new Raiders offense without John Gruden right now. You saw the best game in the Raider career for Kenyon Drake last week, two touchdowns. You saw um, – Yeah, on like what, eight opportunities or yeah, something? Yeah, but he, he looked he, – he was better utilized okay. on those plays. And then you had Jalen Richard in the mix. So I, I, I think he has a good week. No, I'm not going to give him the top 10, Mike. What are you doing? I'm going to sell it. And you're still playing Josh Jacobs. It's fine. But do we have any concern here? Looking at his his box score. So yards per carry is certainly not everything. But Josh Jacobs is averaging 3.2 yards per carry. And his longest run of the season is 15 yards. And that was back in week that one, right? That was week right? one. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't think that he has he set the world on fire, but... I'm still not. I'm. I'm not concerned. I don't. Okay. You know, you've got stretches like this. You see Joe Mixon have bad game, bad game, bad game, and then you just know he's a good running back. He's getting opportunity. You got to start him, and then he comes out has a great game. Uh, that's how I view Josh Jacobs. I'm not concerned. Okay, and he obviously came back from some injuries in the beginning uh, of the year, and he's been fine for fantasy. I mean, week four, 
at running back 35, not great. But other than that, he's been a, a top 24 guy each week that he's played. Michael Pittman against San Francisco. Does he have five or more receptions? Oh, five or more receptions. Here we go. Uh, three in week one, two last week, and then eight, six, six, six. Oh, oh no. Mark, how that beast. This one uh, obviously only had two receptions last week, but that was with more pieces there. It looks like T.Y. Hilton's going to be out. Paris uh, can't. We'll see. We, we don't know yet. It, it re-aggravated an injury, so even if he's in, good chance to uh, re-aggravate the re-aggravation. Um, and then we know Paris Campbell squared. Uh, Paris Campbell's gone, so I'm gonna t I'm gonna buy this. I, I definitely think he has five receptions. Yeah, I'll buy it because they give him a couple of uh, manufactured touches in the screen game, probably. And and like you said, they're they're down some pieces. Carson Wentz was the number one rated passer last week, just for the record. He actually yeah. did look good in that game, and yes. I don't think we need mm -hmm. Mike's answer. His he's contractually obligated here. Yeah, th this is a buy. Uh, but the, the thing I was going to say is. At that game against Houston, unbelievably disappointing. When you're on the field for 96% of the snaps, he ran the, mo the most routes of the wide receiver position, and you only draw three targets? I mean, that's that sucks, man. That's a bad game. I, I don't think I communicated it well last time I brought it up. But what I was trying to communicate about Pittman is just that he has not, for to me, taken the step of being like, the offensive identity at wide receiver for the team where sure. you build a game plan around well, yeah, Pittman, yes. like, um, you know, like Justin Jefferson right now, you know, is going to get demand this many targets. Pittman might get there, but I just don't see it yet. Um, but he's going to have every opportunity with them losing Paris Campbell, who was put on IR, by the way, he's gone for the is, year. Yeah. I would hope that Carson Wentz can realize that Pittman should be the go-to. Yeah, they need to they need to use him in a more traditional alpha way. They need to the back shoulders down the sideline and and some deep throws and some deeper passes or or even like the AJ Brown crossers, like the deep crossers that we saw this past weekend in play action. Jonathan Taylor's tearing people up. They don't play – right now they play action to Paris Campbell. They it, play action to T.Y. Hilton. It does feel like they still have training wheels on him. It does. And I don't understand it. Ryan Tannehill versus Kansas City. Three or more total touchdowns by or sell. Ooh. This one's fun, man. I, I've had a real struggle looking at this. I'm going to let you two go first on this one. Maybe you can convince me of where I should be. He he hit this all the time last year. Great matchup. Yeah, mm. I don't think I can buy this. I, I know the matchup's outstanding, but Kansas City's defense did look better last week. I mean, we were kind of all buying into some Taylor Heineke Kool-Aid, and it didn't manifest – Tannehill going from zero last week to three against Kansas City. I'll sell it. I think he gets. Well, he had one because he had a rushing touchdown. He did have a rushing touchdown. No passing though. Correct. Um, I'll I'll sell it. I think he gets to two, both through the air, and Derrick Henry. Derrick Henry's. Yeah, it's that's what that's what it comes down to is the does Derrick Henry when the, when the coin lands does it land on Derrick Henry and they're at they're inside the five so you know it's. More than likely going to be Derrick Henry, even though you know, you know, uh, Tannehill did steal one for himself. I'm going to buy it. I'm going to buy that he Kansas City will be scoring a lot, and that it just like the game against the Bills, Tennessee will have to score a whole bunch. And this, as great as Derrick Henry is, the variance of of a touchdown turning into a passing touchdown, it has to happen at some point. So I'm going to buy it for this matchup. Yeah, this one feels like I'm going to be wrong. I'm going to I'm going to sell it uh just because of what we've seen so far this season. Uh the I mean, just turn around and give the ball to Derrick Henry and get out of the <laughs> way. Um and and you're not going to get credit for that. That being said, I I think Tannehill is a good streaming option this week. I expect a lot of points. So this this is this is a great line, Brooks. I, I really struggle with this one, but I will sell. I think he gets two touchdowns. We need Mike Vrabel to watch some of this Kansas City tape. Tap pass. Mm. Oh, get, tap it, get pass. it going? Yeah. It's to who, though? <laughs> yeah, the, the problem is <laughs> to Derek, to Derek have, Henry. Henry, oh. Henry can't go. He's not a horizontal runner. You, you, you gotta tap. They got to figure that out. How do you do a tap pass with someone running from behind you? You, you just turn to hand it off, and you slightly yeah. <laughs> did you drop see, it forward. Did you see his false start on uh, Henry's, Monday yes. night? Yeah, see, where he almost fell over. Where he was leaning yes. forward. Did you see how many times they did, um, they did these shotgun handoffs to him? 
And I've never seen, I think it's one of his advantages. I've never seen a player get to the handoff faster. And I think he's doing that lean. I think he's doing that forward Ooh. lean before the snap and timing it up because he comes off of that so fast. It was impressive. Refs. You you better get your eyes on this. I think you can lean. I just think you can't fall. <laughs> <laughs> you can't go Carmelo and full pump fake it. Um, let's uh, let's thank Pristine Auction for sponsoring buy or sell. Let's. You can use the code Ballers <laughs> uh, for a ten dollar credit at pristineauction.com. News and notes from around the league, presented by Sleeper. Presented by the Cleveland Browns. All righty. Case Keenum is starting on Thursday night against the Broncos. It, Brooks brought this one up. Odell Beckham Jr., the quote that uh, what he found is he hopes to be a game time decision. That's what? hysterical. He hopes to be he, a uh, <laughs> Hopefully, I can be a game time decision. <laughs> like, that's. If that's the peak, you'll, you should sit him. Backup <sighs> quarterback. Yeah. I mean, yeah, he, he hasn't been worthwhile. Without a grade three AC joint sprain, Steven, Kevin Steven, <laughs> Steven Kafanski uh, said Jarvis Landry will move around at Tuesday's practice. Is this the kind of information we're getting out of Browns camp? Well, this is where they're at. They, Hopes to move around. You have to understand this is great news. Uh, if you're in Cleveland right now, this is as good as it gets. The news of like. Oh man, he's gonna move around. He's gonna move Woo! around. He's gonna play some dance, dance revolution. I mean, it's just no. He's just gonna get get a little sweaty. I talked about the vibes last week of that that Cardinals Browns game, and the Browns just sucked up all of. The, they're like, we we got all the bad vibes. We'll take it all. Uh, they're starting left tackle. They're starting right tackle that missed last week. Those guys are not practicing so far. I, I haven't seen an update from today's practice. Um, but that's not good. Uh, there there have to be case has to. Throw it to someone, though, right? Yeah, I mean, you you would look at uh, the tight ends. So you look at yep. Njoku. You'd look at Hooper. You'd Njoku look at Donovan. Was also on the injury report this week. Yeah, you look at Donovan Peoples Jones, I guess, and then or or, or even uh, what Demetric Felton. Yeah, yeah, that, that's true. Um, it makes sense if you look at what the Cardinals without uh, Chandler Jones last week were able to do. Um, and then you look at a good pass rush from the 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 Denver Broncos. It gets scary. Kadarius Tony, trending the wrong direction, very unlikely to play. Kenny G still not practicing. What a disastrous first mm. year in New York for Kenny G. I, I'm I'm going to throw something out there that is going to disgust you. Oh, I love it. Um, but I'm I, Dante Pettis had 11 targets last week. <gasps> what? So did I'm, you just <laughs> invoke the name of Dante Pettis? The, Dante Pettis had 11 <gasps> targets. You have Sterling Shepard and Noah. He I is loved going, that guy. He is going to start in two wide receiver sets with no Tony, no Galladay. Is he on the bottom of your waiver wire, Andy? I'm not going to comment. Oh, man. Delightful. But Dante Pettis is a one-week <laughs> desperation, hold your nose, tell no one. I want him to miracle dominate. Miracle play. So bad. I want him to dominate, get a touchdown, run up to the camera and say, take that shit, man. I mean... He looked so good as a wide receiver, got in Shanahan's doghouse, and he got taken back behind the shed and put yes. down. I don't know what you're talking about. I never believed in that man. <laughs> oh, man. Dawson Knox underwent successful Tuesday surgery for his fractured hand. Oh, I'm glad it was successful. And um, Has wow, anyone hey, ever that, said like... That <laughs> report would be so funny. <laughs> we had an unsuccessful hand surgery. He's going to come back in on Wednesday. <laughs> Uh, for another try. We just couldn't find the broken bone. We're going to give it another go. All is as it was before the surgery. <laughs> Except I mean, now he's got a scar on his yeah, head. Yeah. <laughs> Dawson Knox underwent unsuccessful surgery. <laughs> See, it does seem like a really unnecessary adjective here. Yeah, you should just say surgery, right? They've yes. all been successful thus far. A few weeks is what we're hearing. On Dawson Knox. He has the and bye that, week this that's week. That's awful. You were already prepared to be without him, and then the hope is that he could come back um, a little bit quicker. Um, if he misses you know, two weeks, one game, I think that's fine. That's fine to hold him. Obviously, they have not chose to put him on the IR, mm -hmm. which would necessitate three games, four weeks. Because so. it was successful. Right. So I, I, I think you just got to hold him through this. All right. Paris Campbell, like I said, IR. 
That was today's news and notes brought to you by Sleeper, the leader in breaking news alerts. You can grab the Sleeper app, get the breaking alerts channel, and then be aware of you know when Dante Pettis is permanently added to the, the roster. And before we move into the mailbag, Foot Clan, I want to thank today's sponsor, Code Academy. There's never been a better time to become a programmer, and with Code Academy, you can learn to code on your own terms. Whether you're starting from scratch, you're looking to advance, Code Academy can help you reach your goals. Learning to code might be the easiest way to change your career. Simply put, Code Academy is the best way to learn to code online. They not only teach you job ready coding skills, but also help you build unique projects for your portfolio, earn certificates, and even prep for technical interviews. I I'm not a master coder, but I I've I've dabbled. Mm -hmm. And when I was able to successfully build like my first, I think it was like a tic tac toe, just a the small game. It brought me oh. such joy. It was like I have created this. I went in here. I something that seemed like it, it's impossible it's to do. And I learned, and then I and then I started doing other things, and, and that's the type of stuff you can get done on Code on Code Academy. It really is a tremendous skill, even if you're not looking for a, a job transition. Like you can improve your life by learning how to code. It is a legitimately good skill to have, like, and, and also you know, get qualified for in-demand jobs in as little as two months. Learn at your own pace and your own level. Choose from what you want to learn. Got to check it out. Join the millions of people learning to code with Code Academy. And see where coding can take you. Get 15% off your Code Academy Pro membership when you go to codecademy.com. Use the promo code BALLERS. That's the promo code BALLERS at codecademy.com to get 15% off Code Academy Pro, the best way to learn to code. C O D E C A D E M Y.com. Promo code BALLERS. And we want to thank Noom. When it comes to losing weight, there's a lot of pressure out there to label foods as good or bad, but that just creates unnecessary dilemmas. Noom is here to change how we see food with a psychologically based approach that looks at what you eat, but also how you eat. Instead of making you feel uh, guilt or, or regret, Noom empowers you to keep going. We had a listener write in mm -hmm. and suggest to me personally, like Noom changed their life. Noom totally, they, they tried other things that didn't work. Noom really um, changed their relationship with food. I went in, I signed up, I took the test, and you get to your goal. That's a big part of Noom is setting whatever your real goal is. They have questions that they ask so that you can get to a real trackable goal. Uh, you don't need rules to lose weight, just the knowledge and the wisdom to help you build smarter, more sustainable habits. It's a cognitive behavioral approach that helps you unlearn bad habits and better understand your relationship with food. 80% of Noom users finish the program and over 60% have stuck with their goals for at least a year. And all you need is a daily 10 minute check in. No grueling early mornings or huge chunks out of your day. You could start building better habits for healthier long term results. Sign up for your trial at Noom.com slash footballers. That's Noom, N O O M dot com slash footballers. Mailbag. Mailbag. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Mailbag time. If you have a question for the show. Oh, no. Oh, no. If you have a question for the show, you can dial our voicemail hotline, 302-464-TFFB. You can click the submit a question button on the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. We'll go ahead and uh, kick this one off here. A lot of questions about this. About sacrificing a week for your roster yeah. due to bipocalypse. Mm. I have a team with 17 players missing this week in Dynasty. So 10, 18 man roster. 10, so it's unbelievable. 10 by weeks, seven IR players. Twitter question number one comes from Sam. Is it ever okay to accept a loss during a big bye week? Unless I drop one of Thomas, Tony, Herbert, Lamb, Moss, Sanders, I can't even field a full roster this week. My thought is it is better to lose one week than drop someone who makes my team better moving forward. I have different thoughts, but I'll let you guys begin. My my thoughts are you have to start a full active roster. I don't think it's uh, I don't think it's within the the uh, Geneva Convention rules of fantasy football to allow an empty roster spot. So you knew bye weeks are coming up. You've got to make your transactions. It doesn't mean that you have to. Um, you know, I, I think there are situations where you can make a decision that isn't necessarily, you know, looking the best, but you 
you're you're making that tr transaction um, for a reason that you think helps your team, but that would be my that's where my personal baseline is. And really, this is like a league by league thing. I think a league could come together and say, yeah, you you think that's best for your team? That's fine. Vote on it. Agree. Um, or a league would say, absolutely, you can never have an empty roster spot. My personal barometer, that's what it is. You can't have empty roster spots. So you say you got to drop Thomas, Tony, Herbert, Lamb, Moss, or Sanders. Kadarius Tony, you could drop Kadarius Tony. He's currently injured. I know he's the new hotness. You might have to try to bid and get him back if you want him, uh, you know, a week later. Um, but you won't. Or, or yeah, or you won't get him. But I think personally, and this, I don't think this is a hard and fast rule. This isn't one where. It, there's universal uh, a universal answer, but mine would be you have to feel the full roster. Yeah, I lean that direction, but what I would say is just make a transaction. I mean, there are a lot of leagues that I've made trades specifically for Bipocalypse where I'm maneuvering my roster so that I'm not in your position where I'm having to concede. You don't know how many wins you're going to need to get into the playoffs or how perfect the season's going to go mm -hmm. or how many injuries are coming your way. Even if you're making this decision, you should try to win because yes. you might luck into a win. We've seen teams with disgusting rosters end up winning or great rosters that lay an egg. So make a trade, make a maneuver, see if you can. Never you know. aim for a loss. Yeah, I say you got to drop Kadarius Tony, or you can. Well, maybe package trade him. Get something for him. Um, you, you've got players here that you could trade and get a lot of value even on their bye week um, to – maximize you know your your situation yeah the, generally i agree you know yeah you should have to have a full roster this is a this is a week that i feel like fantasy football in, in least in my you know trying to search the memory banks i can't recall a situation where i've seen so many teams have legitimately three-fourths of their roster not available and to me Maybe you can drop Tony because we don't know how long he's actually going to be out. But if Kadarius Tony is only going to be out one week and you've dropped him with what he has shown on the field, you have just damaged your team. Like the, Tony is on the verge of a breakout. He barely played. I think he played six snaps, and that turned into three receptions. Like He is a superstar in the making, and I don't think that that's – if the question is, is it fair to the league – how is how is it necessarily more fair for you to just accept your loss, uh, and give which gives someone more a cheaper win? That's part or, of the problem. Or you're giving another team Kadarius Tony, which launches their team on into a playoff run. That's a, it's an unknown. So to me, fielding, I'm not fielding dropping. a roster, a full roster, is not a huge bar to force on your league. Right. In my opinion. Yeah, I mean you you would have to have a, your entire bench on by. To, to really well, not that, be able to you, look at what you this were in a If you were in a playoff race and your opponent, your main divisional opponent, was playing somebody that didn't field the full roster, you would lose your mind. Abs yes, I would. But we're also in week seven. And so this isn't a this isn't a uh win and in situation where this this person's team, like how you can't drop Herbert. You can't Who's drop Thomas Lamb. I assume that's Michael Thomas. You could drop Michael Thomas. Yeah. I mean, he's still weeks away. And he could he could very well not come back. Like the 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 relationship sure. that, that's this, just looking. This looking I'm just my point is this week is insane. Zach Moss, I'm not dropping Zach Moss. Well, what if you need? I mean, here's a, Andy brought this point I'm up, and I think this Zach is important. Zach Moss to pick up a scrub who's going to get me three points just so I can feel the. You full could roster. very well end up. Let's say you drop Kadarius Tony and pick up mm -hmm. <laughs> Dante Pettis. I mean, sad, but and he goes out and gets you ten points. And you get a you get a win that would have been a loss. Sure. If you could trade Kadarius Tony for a for a win for a you know you, you should do that. Like you've got to you've got to win your weeks to get in the playoffs. So um, I think that's another another aspect. So I think in the end, ask your league, talk about it, see what your league feels is fair. If we were voting in our league, I would say you've got to set a starting roster. I know that one person um, who is. <laughs> Yeah, I mean it's it's a tough it's a tough call, and we have multiple questions. Do I just take the loss? Instagram question from E. Uh, Letty Lopez. You have another person on the commission side saying, "What do I do with managers who leave inactive players in their lineup?" You bring it up now before the week, and you 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 talk about it, and you ask for a vote, and that way everybody knows what they need to do. 
Yeah. I, I just know that it's really tough to be on the outside looking into one of those matchups and saying somebody got a free win. That's just hard. Difficult. Uh, we have some questions about uh, Tyler Lockett. Let's go to the voicemail. Hey, ballers. Full PPR, wide receiver, two questions. A.J. Green, Tyler Lockett, or Tim Patrick? Thanks. Oh, fireball, huh? <sighs> you know, A.J. Green, fireball, Tim Patrick, or Tyler Lockett. You know, Lockett's at the bottom of the list. He's at the bottom of the list because his, his basement is the lowest. You can get a goose from sure. him on Monday night against New Orleans. He's also got a tremendous ceiling. He could one play you to sufficiency. Yeah, yeah he's also the best wide receiver of the three that you just listed. Actual yeah. wide receiver. Yeah. Yes, he is the most talented wide receiver. His situation is could be the worst to me, and I can't. I I really wish he wasn't here for this. <laughs> this guy over here. But it's AJ Green. It, oh no! Why does he get control of the button? You can't play the music for AJ. I didn't oh. hit it. I think if you say his name out loud, it just <laughs> gross. So you would go AJ Green against I, Houston? I would. I think that um, AJ Green has been somewhat consistent. He's going to get his four or five catches, uh, a chance at a touchdown, and really, if you, <laughs> you know, the the Arizona Cardinals playing the Houston Texans, right? This is a team where you're going to be able to run on them. You're going to have a lead. They're favored by 16 points. Um, that being said, I don't think the Cardinals are a great running running team. You saw last week they were up a ton, and that was like a really successful run version of the Arizona Cardinals, and it wasn't that special, and A.J. Green was still fine. And the competition that A.J. Green's going to face, he's like, oh, I can beat these dudes. Let's go. Did you guys see that video I shared with you of him getting off the line for his touchdown? Of course not. You didn't really? No, I really didn't. I don't no. know what you're talking about, so no. Are you being serious? Yeah, too? I'm being serious. Oh, no. I I missed it. If you look at his touchdown from Kyler Murray last week, like I know we watch him and we're like, oh, this is like so pedestrian. <laughs> he just runs the same little route and he's big. Watch the play. Watch the touchdown play. Oh, I refuse. Um, I refuse. Okay. You say, you say it's good. You just said <laughs> no. you starred him. I know. Um, it's part of the bit. But he, yeah, I know. He actually, he actually got off the line and beat his man. It was like one of those wide Shocking. receiver things that you're supposed to do. Uh, Tyler Lockett or Christian Kirk in a full PPR? I mean, similar question from Instagram. Christian Kirk. It's Christian Kirk. Um, who to target and trade? For Tyler Lockett? Lockett, four. I mean, you're you're not getting anything for Tyler Lockett. Well, you're getting something. He Probably still has Dante a <laughs> – You certainly. He still has a big name. Uh, you, is Russell Wilson is coming back. I mean, people are people are trading for Michael Thomas who has done nothing and he's going to come back in a little bit, you can get something for Tyler Lockett. Um, so if you are someone out there trying to shop him around, um, you are not getting... Allen Robinson. You could get that trade to go through for sure. Yeah, but do you the, want the question to? Was, the question was, should, should you, you do to? that? I don't care if you can. No. Okay. No, so because I think Tyler Lockett's situation will get better eventually. That's too low. Uh, Jacoby Myers. I mean, that's mm -hmm. one where... I, do you need I, him now or do you need him later? Exactly. I mean, your team might be in a situation where you really need help. Also, Lockett doesn't care whether you need him now or later. Yeah. He's not going to give you any T. Points. Higgins. Oh, I would definitely trade for T. Higgins. That's a great name because I think he's done very little. Um, people, I, I, I would trade Tyler Lockett for T. Higgins. Would I you? think. Yeah. You yeah. really love T. Higgins. I do love T. Higgins. I think he's, he's a good, good player. player. He's been getting the targets. He has also been dealing with the shoulder injury. Um and I believe in Joe Burrow. I mean, it's not just a T. Higgins thing. It's really a... a so you love this, Tyler Boyd? Uh, no, because I think T. Higgins and Jamar Chase just soak up too much. If all three are active, Tyler Boyd is irrelevant to me and to Joe Burrow. I See, I'm worried that Higgins and Boyd are just going to be both irrelevant on the reg. Like more, I guess it's like an A.J. Green, Christian Kirk thing. Like sure. you have Hopkins and then you have those two guys and you're not going to know which week is better for which one. Um, yeah, Boy but Higgins is still at least seeing like a a twenty percent target share in the offense. Don't we have like a really small sample so far? Uh, it's been with in his four, injury, four games, four games. Okay. Uh, Instagram question, start say question. Fireball Jones, Tim Patrick, or T Higgins this week? <laughs> <laughs> That's impossible. I didn't see that. Neither of us saw that oh. question, and it just ends up being the same players. Um, I'm playing Tim Patrick uh, against the Browns on on Thursday night. Ask yourself this. 
do you need between 11 and 12 and a half points? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> then, yes, um, you do. It's valuable. T Tim Patrick, Fireball Jones, has been extremely, extremely consistent. You want to see how consistent he is. This last week, he was the wide receiver 25. Yeah. Two weeks Which ago. Which I'll take that. Yeah. Off the waiver wire? Two weeks ago, he was the wide receiver 25. Ooh, okay. Four weeks ago, he was the wide receiver <laughs> You guessed it, 25. That's where he is. He's like, I'm not a wide receiver two, but I'm a really good wide receiver three. The best wide receiver three out there. Dearness Johnson went for 68 fab in our league. <sighs> okay. Mm -hmm. Just outbidding Mike. <sighs> you went all in on him. I, right? went, I gave it everything I got. You didn't update with my rhetoric? No. Okay. <laughs> I, J Jason, I... I, I saw am, right through me. I, I have 23. I, did, I knew I wasn't in the running. This was not worry. trying to... Get people down. Don't worry. You got Devonta Freeman. Ooh. He he could end up with the better week, to be yeah. honest. So it, just to illustrate how gross it is for my team currently, because uh, I know what you're all going through out there. Uh, as of now, I will be starting Jamal Williams and Ramondre Stevenson mm. as my running back one and two. Mm. Uh, mm. Uh, I will be flexing Ricky Seals-Jones <laughs> and uh, still IR. <laughs> Still on the IR, Rashad Penny. <laughs> Rashad Penny is in You're your You're just lineup. waiting for That's, the old uh, activation. I, I really can, can we push that through because <laughs> I need to know that I have a player. It's like funny the bipocalypse because this, is real. It, this is how insane this week is. But there are enough of these stories where you are playing somebody who's the story. Right. There are people that are going to be playing two disgusting teams against each other. It's yep. going to be a good time. <laughs> it's going to be a great time. Um, David on Twitter, should I continue stashing Jeff Wilson through the bye again? Yes. I mean, if you can, I don't. If you don't have an IR spot, oh, yeah. then then Jeff Wilson would be someone you have to drop. Yes, uh, agreed. I, I would prefer to stash Jeff Wilson if you need a roster spot. He is completely droppable. Uh, all right. Bryce in Florida, do you, do you ever pick up a player who might get traded to a better situation at the deadline? For example, Ronald Jones could get traded. O.J. Howard could Marlon get traded. Marlon Mack. Yeah. Uh, I, I personally don't. I don't try to. If it's a high. Yeah, I mean, it's hard for a player to transition mid-year and be instantly super relevant. Like the best players don't get to come into those teams that need them and become the best player on the team, right? So even if a hypothetical Adam Thielen got traded, you don't really, and you had a rumor of it, you don't necessarily target Thielen because he could land in a situation where it's worse. Yeah, I mean, I guess with these specific examples, Ronald Jones, Marlon Mack, like Marlon Mack's available on waivers. And if he gets traded, he is a valuable fantasy asset. He would be someone we would be picking up on waivers because he's going to a tr team that says, I need a running back, right? They're trading mm -hmm. for him. And he would become someone that certainly would be at least – a waiver pickup. So if you pick him up a week earlier to get him, it is very similar to picking up a handcuff running back a week earlier. You're probably getting nothing, but you hold on in case it happens. I think that's fine. I think Marlon Mack is the only name out there that, like Ronald Jones, if he was traded, could actually be really good because Ronald Jones sure. has juice and is a good running back. Um, but I don't know of any, I don't think Ronald Jones is getting traded. Uh, this is a team that, that, values the depth there they're a Super Bowl contending team I they're not in need of other pieces or trying to ship him out whereas Marlon Mack the team and the player both want him gone they have agreed to like look for trades so he's the only one that I would be like okay if they're but this week on Bipocalypse you probably don't have a rush spot to burn on Marlon Mack yep Mike anything to add nope I agree with that <laughs> Thursday Night Breakdown. A reminder to take your Thursday night players out of your flex position, which means on a team like mine, missing some sweet, sweet players this week, Donovan Peoples-Jones climbs into my wide receiver spot. Ooh, nice. Yeah, jealous? Congrats. You Good jealous, jealous Mr. Devonta Freeman to Ernest Johnson over he, there? Actually, Ooh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Donovan Peoples-Jones is actually good, and it just takes one play. Yeah, six targets, five targets. Yeah, it'll be all right. Uh, Case Keenum's going to start against Teddy Bridgewater. Bridgewater is still not officially playing. Vic Fangio believes he's playing. Dealt with, uh, I believe, in a foot injury. Um, 
should be out there. But Dearness Johnson will start. Demetrik Felton will work in. Landry and Beckham may miss. I mean, Landry will miss, and then Beckham might miss. So Peoples-Jones, Hooper, and Joku. I mean, we've talked a lot about it on the show already. The Broncos' defense is pretty good. The game is in Cleveland, at least, in case Keenum will give them a shot, right, throwing the ball Mm -hmm. down the field. Both teams desperately in need of a win, right? I mean, the the Browns sputtered injuries. Broncos have lost three in a row. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the DraftKings Sportsbook line here, we don't have it. Yeah. Because we don't know the quarterback. Yeah, I'm looking it up right now to see if it's – right now the active line is still Cleveland favored by two and a half points. Okay. Well, Baker, no Baker. Um, Any other – Thoughts on Dearness, the ceiling for him in this game? Is there a world where you, if you picked him up on waivers, is he going in your lineup over like Elijah Missile against Indiana? No, not against, not over Elijah, but I, I think most people that picked him up had to spend up for him, and they already know he's locked into their lineup. Uh, the identity of this team is to run the ball. Yes, and 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 make no mistake, Dearness Johnson has looked good. Like he is, when, when he's been given his, his opportunities, he looks like a player that can succeed. I think that his opportunity this time is running uphill. I got, um, I got some opportunity questions for you. Then. Okay. So Dearness Johnson sh- should be locked in for a bunch of volume here uh, against you know Denver on Thursday or coming off of the bye, Michael Carter for the New York Jets facing the New England Patriots, which Michael Carter's volume has been increasing and uh, it looks like – especially coming out of a bye week, Michael Carter could be the 1A now. It's a pretty easy one for me. Uh, I've, I'm on the Dearness Johnson okay. side. Yeah, very much Dearness. Okay. I mean, you have a much higher ceiling, and they're the favorite team at home as opposed to Jets, Patriots. Okay. We don't have a report yet for Damian Williams' status of the Chicago Bears because he was uh, on the COVID list. But okay. L- but let's say he's out again. Khalil Herbert, who looked fantastic, but – He's playing the Tampa Bay Buccaneers this week. Yeah, I'll go Dearness. Ooh, that one is really tough. If 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 Herbert was by himself, I would probably go Herbert. All right, really and, against Tampa? Uh, it's Tampa's running defense. No, I know, I know, but I'm. Uh, We've seen Dearness one time with double digit carries. He went thirteen for ninety five. I yeah. like Dearness Johnson. Sure. Yeah. And last one here because this is more of a you got to make your decision. You have a Thursday matchup and you have a Monday matchup. You don't know if Alex Collins. Oh, you have to. Okay. You can't play any. You cannot play any Seahawk over Dearness Johnson. Okay. That is, that is just the world we live in because of Monday Night Football. Not knowing Alex Collins, not fully knowing Rashad Penny, even though we expect him to be active. Any option you have there, it's Dearness Johnson over him. Just by simple process of elimination. Exactly. Are you starting the running backs on the other side of the ball in this game over to Ernest? I mean, Javante Williams, uh, you know that these guys oh. are going to get the same amount of opportunities. I mean, look at last week. 10 rushing attempts, 50 yards for Melvin Gordon. 11 attempts, 53 yards for Javante Williams. They're, they almost were matching yards per carry, matching opportunities. 13 opportunities, 14 last week. I mean, even the catches. I mean, three for three. On targets and receptions for both players. <laughs> they are interchangeable one in the coaching you, staff's mind. Yeah. One for you. So do you go the the majority workload with Dearness, or do you take Gordon or Williams on the road? I think you go Dearness, even though he has he doesn't quite have the talent uh, as the other side has. Again, you you talked about it. He's favored. He's at home, and he's a, more alone um to to get more of the work than he's more these alone <laughs> like psychologically he's just he's, all alone he's alone like he's the leader in the backfield oh. as opposed to a complete <laughs> shared Siamese twin situation gotcha yeah if only you could combine gordon and williams into one like a like one of those three-legged like, races i say like shoulders <laughs> he's got the t- big trench coat but <laughs> it's it's been tough <laughs> Uh, the, both guys are a crapshoot, and mm-hmm. neither of them have been giving you weak winning weeks. Cortland Sutton is a must play. Yes, he the targets is. are through the roof. Tim Patrick, you know what you're getting with him, eleven to twelve points. Um, and the matchup is strong. You know the the Browns twenty seventh against fantasy wide receivers. Noah Fant, it, he was limited yesterday. I think that's just a maintenance day. 
He's been managing an injury all year. He seems like a start worthy tight end until they get more targets. I mean, that was a incredible game. He was, he was the number one tight end. Nine for ninety seven and one. Like that's yeah. a huge cool. game for Noah Fant. Cool. Here. Yeah, cool. <laughs> really, uh, really good. Imagine- if the Foot Clan is not up to date because I I know they probably know <laughs> that we had a trade where I got Mark Andrews, you got Noah Fant in, in a trade involving <laughs> Zeke. And and that would be good for you last week, except last week you traded Noah Fant for – who's that dude with the broken hand? I traded him for Emmanuel Sanders. Yeah, he, oh. had, he had gotten Knox, so he felt that Fant was expended. You traded for Knox and then got rid of Fant. But yeah, but then yeah. Knox broke his hand and Fant went from the 32nd He's best knocks him too hard. Yeah, yeah, It's yeah. a wood door. It's not a good feeling because now I have Dan Arnold. <laughs> you and do you don't – I mean, do worse. Yeah, I mean, he is so alone. So that's good. Thank you. All right. Well, I mean, you don't this week, but you know. Yeah, you don't. I know. I don't this week. No, I get Anthony Ferkser this week. Oh, Ferk Daddy. Ferk Daddy. Well, Mike has uh, Tannehill with three touchdowns. I can only hope and pray that one of them goes to Ferk Daddy. Hey, it could be. Ferk Daddy is. um, It's a nickname. All right. And then that was not even ours. Like that's just somehow that started spreading. Is it? Yes. That's out there. Oh, yeah. Mm. It's out there. Yeah. Just loving every minute of it. Starts of the week. Matchups part one tomorrow. Boom, boom, kicker. Oh, yeah. And then I'm skipping Friday's show with the Wheel of Shame. I don't know if you guys knew that. <laughs> I've actually got a dentist appointment I just scheduled for 10 minutes before the About end. About to it. knock out my tooth. <laughs> at the end of the show. <laughs> Twitter at the FF Ballers, the community. Join the foot.com and the start say tool, all the rankings at the fantasy footballers.com. Back with another show tomorrow. Jason. Uh, check out megalobowl.com over the next few days. We're going to have a leaderboard going up. That'll do it for today's show, everyone. Thank you for tuning in. We will see you on Green Room. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.